The History of the Batman Movies Batman 1943 The Dark Knight made his first live-action appearance in a 15-chapter serial called Batman. Our hero's mission was to defeat the sabotage schemes of Japanese agent Dr. Daka, operating in Gotham City at the height of World War II. Batman was portrayed as a secret government agent instead of an independent crime-fighting vigilante due to the time period's film censors, who would not allow the hero to be seen taking the law into his own hands. The film is notable for providing two core elements of the Batman mythos. The Batcave, and Alfred's trim physique and thin mustache. Batman and Robin 1949 Batman and Robin is a sequel to the 1943 serial, although with different actors. The plot dealt with the dynamic duo facing off against the Wizard, a hooded villain whose identity remains a mystery throughout the serial until the end. Its low budget could be noticed everywhere in the money-saving shortcuts and other inadequacies. The Batman costume had a poorly fitting cowl, and the Robin costume added pink tights to cover the hairy legs of both the actor and the stuntman. The Batmobile is again excluded, but instead of a limousine as in the first serial, the duo drives around in a 1949 Mercury. Batman The TV Series 1966-1968 The 1960s TV series is known for its campy style, upbeat theme music, and relatively simplistic youth-aimed moral lessons, including championing the importance of using seatbelts, doing homework, eating vegetables, and drinking milk. It starred Adam West as Batman and Burt Ward as Robin. 120 episodes aired on the ABC network for three seasons from 1966 to 1968. The Joker, The Penguin, The Riddler, Catwoman, Mr. Freeze, and The Mad Hatter, villains who originated in the comic books, all appeared in the series, the plots for which were deliberately villain-driven as well as action-comedy heavy. By Season 3, ratings were falling and the future of the series seemed uncertain. To attract new viewers, the Batgirl character was created and introduced in the comics as well. Batman The Movie 1966. The first full-length theatrical adaptation of Batman was originally intended to be produced before the series as a way to introduce it to the public. However, the series premiere was moved up and the film was forced to wait until the summer hiatus after the first season. The movie includes most members of the original TV cast. Batman 1989. Inspired by the original work of Bill Finger and Bob Kane from the late 30s and 40s, and also by the darker Batman comics of the 1980s, including the work of Frank Miller and Alan Moore, Tim Burton moved the franchise toward Batman's dark roots and away from the campy 1960s interpretation of the character. Bruce Wayne struggling with his alter ego as Batman is depicted as an anti-hero. Batman has to push the boundaries of civil justice to deal with certain criminals such as the Joker. The film also served as an inspiration for Batman the Animated Series, paving the way for the DC Animated Universe, and has influenced Hollywood's modern marketing and development techniques of the superhero film genre. Batman Returns, 1992 Burton had mixed emotions toward the first film, but agreed to direct the sequel after he was granted more creative control. Much of the critics gave praise towards Tim Burton's visual style, Danny Elfman's musical score, accompanied by production designer Bo Welsh, as well as the casting of Michelle Pfeiffer, Danny DeVito, and Christopher Walken in supporting roles to complement Keaton's portrayal of Batman, though the consistently dark and violent tone received mixed reviews. Although Batman Returns was a financial success, Warner Brothers felt the film should have made more money. The studio decided to change the direction of the Batman film series to be more mainstream. Joel Schumacher replaced Tim Burton as director, while Burton decided to stay on as producer. Batman Forever 1995 Batman Forever's tone is significantly different from the previous installments, becoming more family-friendly. 
Schumacher issued the dark, dystopian atmosphere of Burton's films by drawing inspiration from the Batman comic book of the Dick Sprang era, as well as the 1960s television series. Michael Keaton did not like the new direction the film series was heading in, and was replaced by Val Kilmer as Batman. Chris O'Donnell was introduced as Robin, Jim Carrey starred as the Riddler, while Tommy Lee Jones starred as Two-Face. Batman and Robin, 1997 After the release of Batman Forever, Warner Brothers started development on Batman and Robin, commissioning it on the fast track for an adamant June 1997 release. Val Kilmer did not return because of scheduling conflicts and was replaced by George Clooney. Chris O'Donnell reprised his role as Robin, Arnold Schwarzenegger starred as Mr. Freeze, while Uma Thurman starred as Poison Ivy, and Alicia Silverstone starred as Batgirl. The film received primarily negative reviews. Observers criticized the film for its toyetic and campy approach, and for homosexual innuendos added by Schumacher. Batman and Robin received numerous nominations at the Razzie Awards, and ranks among the worst-rated superhero films of all time. The Dark Knight Trilogy Nolan stated his intention to reinvent the film franchise of Batman by, quote, doing the origin story of the character, which is a story that's never been told before. He and Goyer aimed for a darker and more realistic tone, with humanity and realism being the basis of the origin film. The goal was to get the audience to care for both Batman and Bruce Wayne. Nolan wanted an all-star supporting cast for Batman Begins to lend a more epic feel and credibility to the story. Actors like Christian Bale, Liam Neeson, Gary Oldman, Michael Caine, and Morgan Freeman were cast. Other big names such as Heath Ledger, Aaron Eckhart, Maggie Yulenhall, Anne Hathaway, and Tom Hardy will later star in the sequels. The Dark Knight followed the themes of Batman Begins, including Justice vs. Revenge and Bruce Wayne's issues with his father. The sequel also portrayed Wayne more as a detective, an aspect of his character not fully developed in Batman Begins. Nolan described the friendly rivalry between Bruce Wayne and Harvey Dent as the backbone of the film. He also chose to compress the overall storyline, allowing Dent to become Two-Face in The Dark Knight, thus giving the film an emotional arc the unsympathetic Joker could not offer. The film is dedicated to Heath Ledger, who passed away in January 2008, some months after completing filming, from a toxic combination of prescription drugs. All of Ledger's scenes appear as he completed them in the filming, no digital effects were added to alter Ledger's actual performance posthumously. Nolan finished his Batman trilogy in 2012 with The Dark Knight Rises, being one of the only superhero trilogies to tell a complete and whole story. Following the success of The Joker in The Dark Knight, Nolan wanted the antagonist to be vastly different and committed to using Bane, citing the need for a character with a physical presence within the film. The Dark Knight trilogy is commonly regarded as one of the finest in superhero movie lore, and it has set the bar very high for other superhero movies for decades to come. Each film in the series was a box office success, in particular the second and third films, which both earned over one billion dollars worldwide. Batman vs Superman Dawn of Justice 2016 Directed by Zack Snyder, the film is a follow-up to 2013's Man of Steel and is the second installment in the DC Extended Universe. It features an ensemble cast that includes Ben Affleck, Henry Cavill, Amy Adams, Jesse Eisenberg, Gal Gadot, and Jeremy Irons. In the film, criminal mastermind Lex Luthor manipulates Batman into a preemptive battle with Superman, whom Luthor is obsessed with defeating. Batman vs. Superman took inspiration from the Batman comic book series The Dark Knight Returns by Frank Miller, as well as the Death of Superman story arc. The incarnation of Batman in this film is different from the character's previous portrayal in the Dark Knight trilogy, serving as a cinematic reboot of the character. This is the first live-action film to feature Batman and Superman together, as well as the first live-action cinematic portrayal of Wonder Woman, Aquaman, Cyborg, and The Flash. 
To further establish the interconnection between the films of the shared universe, Affleck appeared as Batman in a few brief flashbacks in 2016's Suicide Squad. He will also play Batman in both of the following Justice League movies, scheduled for 2017 and 2019. It was confirmed that Affleck had written a screenplay for a standalone Batman film, which he would star in and direct. Affleck stated that his solo Batman film would borrow from the comics, but mainly be an original story. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know in the comments what was your favorite Batman movie and why. If you found our video interesting and want to see more, don't forget to hit the like and the subscribe buttons. See you next time!